In this video, we're going to take the priority finite state diagram we've created for this defense bot, and we're going to start to implement it in our code. In the same way when we designed our diagram, we started step by step by first just implementing the states. That's what we'll also do in the code. So we're going to take this diagram and we're going to convert the states into actual code in our bot, which will evaluate functions. So let's go across to our editor. And the first thing we'll do is at the top here, we'll import the enum module. Now I won't go into any great detail in this other than to say it makes it a really nice elegant way to create all our states and assign them a number because computers work really really efficiently when using numbers but humans work much better when we read words. So what an enum will do is allow us to use words in our code so it's easy for us to read but the computer will use them as numbers. So let's implement this to see what we mean. So we'll create a class of things. So this means a type, a type of thing. So we're going to create the type of state and it's going to be an enumerated data type. So basically what that means is we're going to put a lot of names to numbers. So we'll look at the names, the computer will look at the numbers. So what goes in here is our different states. So if we go back to our diagram, we can see there's four states, wait, attack, jailbreak, and return. So we put each one in, assigning it a unique number. So now we've defined all the different states that our bot can be in. Wait, attack, jailbreak and return. So we can now use those names in our code. And the first space we'll do it in is in this function here called the init. So init is short for initialize. So this is where you put anything that needs to happen before the game starts running. So tick will get called 30 times a second during the gameplay, so this is the game actually running, but init gets run only once, and that's before the game actually starts. So in here what we'll do is we'll set a variable, and we'll call that our current state. So this will keep track of what state we are in. And our first state we will set is our wait state. So to begin with, this bot will be in the wait state. Okay, so we've prepared everything now and we're in the tick function, so our game is running. So what we need to do is we need to check what state we're in and run the code that we would run for that state. So whenever we're asking a question in programming, we use an if statement. So what we want to check is if our current state matches the wait state, the attack state, the jailbreak state, and the return state, and if they do, I want to run the code that is just specific to that state. Now this function doesn't exist yet, but I'll create it. So we'll say there's a function called self.wait. So in this bot, that's what self stands for, in this bot there'll be a function called wait, and we'll want to run that code if we're in the wait state. Then we'll che check each subsequent state. So else, if that was false, if the current state is attack, then we'll want to call the attack code. Now when we get to this last one, we've called it return, and you can see when I've typed self.return, returns come up in purple. That's because return is a keyword in Python, it's a reserved word, it's a, reserved that, it's a word that actually means something to Python, so we can't use that as a function name or a variable name. So in the case of this particular function, we'll call it return home. Okay, so we've covered each of our states, now what if something's gone wrong, it's unlikely, but let's say it doesn't match any of those. Then what we do is we have a final else that says if for whatever reason none of this has matched, something's gone very wrong. So what we'll do is we'll set our current state to one particular state 
that does match these so it doesn't continue to go wrong. And I'll say if all else goes wrong we'll change to the wait state. It could have been any of the others, maybe return, whatever it is, but if for some reason our current state has ended up going awry and being assigned to something that's not 0, 1, 2 or 3, then we'll just set it back to be um, 0 and so then this will work on the next tick. Okay, so we've now got our main loop working. 30 times a second tick is called and depending on what our current state is, then that will call the function that matches that state. So the final step for setting up our different states is to define a function for each one of them. So you can see we need the wait state and we need to put self in there because it's part of this bot. Now for now I'm just going to put the word pass which means do nothing. So I'm going to have all this code here that when it runs it will go down, run that function and that function just says do nothing. So our code won't actually do anything, the bot will just sit still. But we'll have our first step done and we'll come back and fill those in in the next video. So we do that for each of the states. And that's step one done. So we've listed all our different possible states in our enumerated data type here, wait, attack, jailbreak and return. We've set an initial state, what state are we in when the game starts? And then every time we refresh the screen, we ask what state are we in? And if we're in a particular state, let's say the attack state, then we call the attack function. Okay, so that's what our loop's going to do. So we'll call the attack function, which at the moment does nothing. It just says pass over this function, don't do anything. That's step one. So the next step will be to go back and look at our priority finite state diagram and figure out what goes into each one of these functions and then we'll start implementing that in the next video.